Hi, and welcome back to Glassboxed, writing automated cucumber tests. Today we're going to have a look at using Maven to set up a brand new cucumber framework from scratch. We will look at building a cucumber framework from scratch using Maven, how we can use Maven to help manage uh, various aspects of our framework, and using Maven to run our tests. Uh, so first things first, a quick overview of what Maven is. So Maven is what's known as a build tool. Uh, it's used to effectively not just help manage your project but also build various things for your project. So for instance you can help it to build applications, you can uh, use it to run only your tests on your applications. It's effectively on a really abstract level a task runner for your project. It can do various other things as well such as um, help manage the libraries for your project uh, run specific tasks uh, based on maybe filterings yeah, and so on. I'm not going to dive into the technicalities of Maven uh, for this particular video anyway. Uh, the focus here is just to create a framework using Maven as the backbone tool. So let's begin by creating a brand new Maven project and to do this you go to file new project and then search for Maven uh, and then select Maven project click next uh, next next and here what we're going to do is we're going to give or rather we're going to supply some information uh, for our project so the first thing we need to do is provide it a group ID which is effectively uh, just the ID for the project so I'm just going to give it um, com.cucumber the artifact ID is on an abstract level almost the name of your project uh, so this would be the name you would see appear under the package explorer so again give it a sensible name uh, so I'm going to call it uh, maven cucumber prototype uh, and then give it a package so I'm going to call it um, package dot cucumber dot maven cucumber prototype and then click finish and open it up so really quickly what what's actually happened so when we create a maven project it actually does a little bit of house cleaning for us it creates various directories uh, but more importantly it creates uh, this particular XML file called the pom file so let's open that up and let's just navigate to the pom.xml tab so what is the pom file uh, well the pom file is effectively the backbone of your project is, is the configuration file if you like for Maven that is used to do various various different things for this particular video we're only going to concentrate on what's called the dependencies uh, the dependencies are effectively uh, the jars that we will need to use in order to uh, write and run various uh, cucumber tests so the first thing we'll do is uh, upgrade our JUnit to um, 4.11 we also need uh, the cucumber jars and to do that we just uh, we'll create a new dependency tag and in here we are going to uh, need a group we're also going to need an artifact ID a version tag and scope so we're going to actually need three more jars so really quickly I'm just going to copy this three times Okay, so the first one we need is belongs to the group ID of info.cooks and it's called um, cucumber dash java. The version we're going to use is 1.1.2 and the scope is going to be within the test. We're going to do the same thing for um, cucumber pico container. same version and finally we're also going to need cucumbers take on JUnit right 
Right, so now we have uh, a JUnit jar that we'll be using and three Cucumber jars. The first containing the Java needed, the second containing various things uh, which effectively pulls in a lot of dependencies for us, and the final one is the JUnit API methods needed to run Cucumber as a JUnit. So here's a neat trick I learned earlier. If you press Control Shift L, it brings up a list of shortcuts, uh, which I actually found out not too long ago. And one of my favorites is the format shortcut. It helps you kind of identify what all the shortcut keys are. So again, I, I, as part of my videos, I really like to give away certain things that are not as uh, sparringly used, if you like. But anyway, the format is uh, one of my favorites. Anyway, Control Shift F, click that, and really nicely formats uh, any open window you have. So let's save that. Now, if we open up our main dependencies, what you should now notice is it's actually pulled in all of these jars for us. Uh, so I assume that you may have seen the very first Cucumber video in which I manually look for jars. If we use a build tool such as this Maven, it does everything for us. So if I were to change the version here, it would go off, find the version, and pull it in and get rid of this one. It really helps to really shop for jars without having to physically go and download them from anywhere. It's, it's a really convenient way of managing various things for us. Anyway, so that's effectively the jar setup. The next thing we need to do is just give this a go. So the first thing we're going to do is just making sure we haven't broken anything. If you right click on your project and then go to run as and just run maven test, what should happen is it will try and find any tests and run them. Naturally, we don't have any tests. So what's happened is, it's tried to run this app test. Uh, I'll get to that in a, in a second. Uh, but more importantly, it's a build success. So we know our Maven framework, uh, so far, has no errors in it. Uh, this is what we were trying to drive towards for the moment. Now let's see this app test. So again, when you create a project, it by default creates uh, Maven, creates these, um, these apps uh, that we don't actually want. So just go ahead and get rid of them. So just uh, highlight them and just uh, delete them. The next thing we want to do is actually uh, write a feature file and see if we can run that as well. So to write a feature file, what we do is we should typically write our feature files under a brand new directory. The reason we want to do this is so that we want to actually keep our tests different to our resources and we'll treat our feature file as a resource. The reason why is because that's what it is. A feature file isn't necessarily a test, and it also isn't necessarily part of your main code. It's almost an abstract uh, English uh, version of your test written on a high level. So it just makes logical sense to have all feature files under a resource directory. So to do this, we're just going to right click on our project, go to new, and just add in a source folder. And we're going to put it under the source test for slash resource. So, okay, now we're going to right click on this and go new file and we're going to create a brand new feature file. So I'm just going to call this a my feature dot feature and this creates a brand new feature file. So again if you create this feature file and you don't see the icon in this kind of limeish greenish icon um, that, that's probably because you don't have the cucumber plugin uh, if you have a look at my first video, uh, that will explain in detail how to get this particular plugin. So once you have this plugin, uh, and a note, you don't have to have the plugin to run uh, feature files, but having the plugin does help a lot. What we're going to do is we're just going to write a really basic feature. So we're going to say feature. Um, this is my dummy feature file scenario. Uh, this is my first dummy scenario. Uh, given uh, this is my first dummy given step and we're going to do the same thing for the uh, when and then as well uh, so let's use that shortcut it was control shift F for auto format there you go now again before I go any forward a lot of people might say, why, why are you just kind of 
using a really rudimentary version of steps, why don't you do something more uh, practical and useful? The reason I'm not doing anything uh, too in-depth with this feature scenario is because I've covered all of that uh, as part of my previous video. Uh, this video, I just want to get this proof of concept up and running, and I don't want to kind of repeat myself. Uh, anyway, so what we're going to do is we're just going to save that. Now, since we pulled in all the jars, if we now try and just run this, this should run without any problems in that, well, as you can see here, it's actually run the feature file, which means our uh, dependencies are working, but naturally it's saying can't find the uh, the necessary steps. So we're just going to copy these steps really quickly, and we're going to create a step file, and we are going to create a test file under the source Java, uh, the source test Java directory, in particular under our package. So if we just go new, uh, let me show that again, so if you go right click on the package name under the source test java directory and then go to new class uh, and let's give this uh, a name so let's just call this um, steps and we copy our steps here and what we're going to do is uh, we're just going to do some system uh, outputs and I'm just going to copy this for the others as well and I'm just going to say executed the first given step uh, executed the first when step and finally executed the uh, first then Step. Actually, no, let's not make this confusing. Uh, let's call this the second and let's call this the third. Uh, we're going to auto import all the necessary libraries. So it's a control shift O for auto import of all libraries. And the reason we, why we have uh, these red lines is because the step terms are exactly the same. Uh, yes, they are. So we'll just change it here as well. Second, third, and do the same on the steps. Now let's save everything and rerun our feature file. Perfect. So we now have feature files which run our step definition. So another way to, to rephrase that is, so far in our framework when we run a feature file, they are able to pick up step definitions from our step file. So that's effectively the first milestone done. That's, that's the first part of the framework done. Again, what we're going to do is really quickly just right click on, on Maven Cucumber, the project title, and just quickly do a run as Maven test. Again, just to make sure it's all working. Good. Uh, we've got a build success. And notice that um, previously, where we had app test, which ran, this time we didn't run because we've uh, removed it. Right. So, so far, we've fruit our feature file runs. Now, what we're going to do is now we're going to actually revisit. Uh, our runner class and we're going to write a runner class to prove that our framework also works with our runner class. So to create a runner class again similarly you go to your source test java directory and under the package name right click and create a new class and we're going to call this the runner test. Now it's important that you put in test as part of your class name and it's also important you put in test as the last word of your class name. I'll get back to that why uh, in a bit, but for the moment, uh, notice this is something we ha uh, well, we don't have to do, but it's, it's good to do. So let's create a class. So in this class, what we're going to do is, again, all of this has been explained, uh, but I'll just glimpse through it. The first thing we're going to do is mark this class with a, a run uh, with annotation and pass it to the cucumber class. So what this does is effectively marks this class as a JUnit class. Or another way to think of it is, once we've added in this run with annotation, we can now run this particular class as a JUnit test. Why is that important? Well, because JUnit tests give uh, gives us outputs in terms of the number of tests that 
uh, executed the number of tests that passed, failed, and so on. We're also going to give uh, some options. So it's uh, cucumber dot, dot options, and the options we're going to pass in the first is uh, well, the only for the moment is the features. And what this does is this tells this class when it runs where the features are. So we've already identified this. We're going to put all the f well, we have put all our features in the source test resource directory. So to do this, quite simply, just uh, give it the path. Right. Again, uh, we'll use Control Shift O to quickly import all the necessary classes. Okay. Now what we're going to do is, again, let's just quickly save this. Now we will right-click on this class, and because we've passed in the cucumber.class, we should now be able to run it as a JUnit. So let's run this and see what happens. And there you go. So what's happened is it's picked up the, well, for starters, it's actually run all, all the steps, which is good, which this is uh, proof that it picked up the feature file and in turn picked up the necessary steps. So that's the step in the right direction. That's exactly what we're trying to drive towards. And if we then open up our JUnit uh, hierarchy of steps that it ran, we can even see in detail what actually happened. So it ran particular steps. So here we can see that it, was, it found a feature file, and in that feature file found a scenario. And for that scenario, it had three steps, and it ran all three steps. And the fact that our system print lines got printed to the console window is proof that our step definitions executed as part of our feature file, which was picked up by our runner class. So again, this is effectively the second milestone in getting our framework up and running using Maven. Now the final thing we need to do is, and this is where these runner test, uh, the naming convention of test comes in, is effectively, again, right clicking on the project and running as Maven test. So let me run Maven test and then I explain why we called our runner class uh, appended with the test name. So let's run it and see what happens. So now if you have a look, when we called our class runner.test, because we called it test, it was picked up as part of Maven test task. If we hadn't called it test, uh, this runner test class would not have been picked up. And again, proof in the pudding in that, again, we can see that our steps actually executed. But ultimately, our build failed, uh, sorry, failed, our build succeeded, uh, which is what we're trying to drive towards. So now, we have a fully functioning framework that helps us do various things. On the first, it if we have a look at a pom, uh, so so all right. So the first thing it does is it helps us manage our dependencies uh, very easily. It helps us to run our test class either independently via right clicking on it directly and running as JUnit test, or via right clicking on the project and running as a maven test. We also have the ability to directly run a feature file and when running a feature file our steps are picked up. So we now have, although a very basic but a very powerful framework which allows us to run both our feature files independently and our runner class independently or the whole thing in one go via Maven's test command. And that's it for this video, folks. Uh, if you enjoy my video and find they bring some new knowledge or insight into writing cucumber tests, uh, then please subscribe and rate. If you have any questions or video suggestions, uh, then please leave a comment below. Many thanks for watching. Until next time, ciao.